Thank you all for joining us today for the Accessing Capital panel. We're uh, happy to have you and um, we're happy to have this live on on YouTube uh, for years to come. As some housekeeping, uh, like I just mentioned, we're recording um, for folks to be able to view this in the future. We would like you to mute yourself when you're not speaking um, and also throw your questions in the chat. Simeon and I will monitor the chat and uh, make sure we get to all your questions within the presentation. After the workshop, I will send an email with contact information for our program, um, as well as for all our presenters, as well as links to resources that we talk about and copies of the presentations, including these introductory slides. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Simeon Geigel. Thanks, Sophia. Appreciate it. Welcome, everybody, and welcome again to the Accessing Capital Workshop. I'm thrilled to have the presenters here and folks that are here to learn more about them. Uh, I just want to take a moment to talk about the Micro Business Development Program. I know some of you are already familiar with our program, but for those who are not, we work with low to moderate income Vermonters. Um, and the program was started back in um, 1988. And we provide technical assistance um, to help people start or expand a business. There's no fee for our services, and uh, but folks do need to qualify uh, based on income eligibility guidelines. And so um, if you are interested or you know somebody who may be interested, please don't hesitate to uh, contact us in the CVOEO office, uh, we have three counselors, myself, John Gurgley, and, and Pacific Sangha Yuva. You can see their contact information below. Uh, just to reach out, it's as easy as just calling or emailing us, and um, we'll just ask you a few questions to get you qualified and share some information about our program to make sure it's the right fit and what you're looking for. So feel free to reach out whenever you're ready. So there are a total of five micro businesses around the state, and each micro business oversees a certain set of uh, counties or territories. And so each micro business falls under a uh, community action agency. So around the state, you can see that there are the different programs here. We've got Brock covering Bennington Rutland, Capstone covers Washington County, Lamoille East and West Orange, CVOEO, my program covers Addison, Chittenden, Franklin and Grand Isle, NECA, a in the Northeast Kingdom covers Caledonia, Essex, and Orleans, and Sevka in the southern part of the state covers um, uh, Wyndham and Windsor, and you can see the different contacts for each organization there, and once again, um, as Sophia mentioned, this information will be provided to you in the follow-up email. You can also learn more about our program and connect with um, these individuals and the different organizations listed above at the mbdp.org website. So I do like to make a point of providing other business resources to folks. Uh, we've got a lot of great uh, resources in our area. Um, one of our presenters today, the first one at the top here, Burlington's Business and Workforce Development Department, uh, works with businesses uh, in Burlington and they will elaborate on what they do more. There's also the Center for Women in Enterprise, Mercy Connections, the Women's Small Business Program, the Vermont Small Business Development Center, uh, the federal program, the Small Business Administration, and finally, uh, the Champlain Valley SCORE. So I would definitely like to take the opportunity just to welcome all of the presenters from each of the organizations that will be presenting today. We have Abby Solomon from Community Capital of Vermont. She's a loan officer there, and uh, I've worked with her over the course of time, uh, many different times. And so I know that she'll be elaborating on their services. We've got Ben Green from uh, the Vermont Community Loan Fund. Again, worked, have worked with Ben a lot as well, and I uh, look forward to learning more about his program and him sharing with you, of course. Uh, Johanna uh, Schneider uh, with um, the, uh, the Burlington Workforce Development Program, as well as Will Clavel, and um, I'm excited to, for them to share more about their program as it's new. And so welcome, everyone. I really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to share information about your program. Obviously, this will live on in a recorded format and will continue to help others for um, well, for as long as the internet is up, which I guess is 
eternity. So I will turn it over to um, the Burlington Workforce Development Program first, uh, followed by Community Capital, and then the Vermont Community Loan Fund to present. So um, we'll- Thank you, Simeon. Mara, take it away. You bet. I will uh, share slides one moment. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Will Clavel, the Assistant Director of Business Development for the City of Burlington's Economic Development Office, and I am joined by my colleague, Johanna. Hi, everyone. As Simeon said, I'm the Small Business Support Specialist working with Will to support Burlington businesses. All right. Well, we got our slides. You can take it away. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I guess in a nutshell, um, we are here to support Burlington businesses and uh, entrepreneurs looking to start businesses in Burlington. Uh, we provide free technical assistance, similar to CVOEO. Uh, we work on larger economic development projects within the city, put on classes, and we're really excited today to talk about two new revolving loan programs that we recently launched. Uh, the city hasn't had revolving loan funds for about 12 years now. So we're excited that our city council decided to use some of the federal ARPA funds, American Rescue Plan Act dollars, to create uh, two revolving loan programs. This is the overview that you can see here. The first program is a micro lending program. So loans between one to $15,000. Uh, both these programs are zero interest. The Kiva program is really designed for smaller businesses, home-based businesses, um, market vendors, food carts, um, individuals that don't have employees yet. And then in order to serve businesses of various sizes, we also have a larger Burlington revolving loan program, um, larger loans, 10,000 to 40,000, also zero interest, a little bit larger terms. There, um, there is an application fee and a small administrative fee and being zero interest, both of these loan programs are Sharia law compliant. And this is designed for a little bit larger businesses. We often see brick and mortar businesses applying to this program and businesses that are growing and hiring new employees. So um, Johanna and I will get into more of the specifics of these two programs, but I do wanna say we're gonna leave plenty of time for questions and we're happy to meet with anybody um, outside of this presentation to talk about each program in more depth and see which one would make the most sense for you and your business. Um, so yeah, I think, Johanna, I'm going to pass it over to you. Yeah, thanks, Will. Um, so just to go over the requirements for both our programs, so these requirements apply to both the micro lending program and the larger uh, revolving loan program. So these loans, because of the funding was specific for Burlington, the place of business must be within the city of Burlington. Applicants must be current on taxes and terms um, with the city. It must be registered. Business must be registered with the state of the Vermont. And loans may only be used for working capital, inventory, equipment, rent, furniture, and fixtures. Um, these loans are not for the purpose of refinancing existing debt or supporting businesses in the industries of firearms, cannabis, liquor stores, or smoke shops. Um, if you have specific questions around that, we're happily to talk more in detail to see if you know you would meet the requirements. And then we also really want to reiterate that the programs were created to support businesses and entrepreneurs in the city that may not have access to traditional capital. Um, so they might not be able to access you know a bank loan, for example, from a traditional bank. And so those we just want to say these are that's who we're supporting with these programs. Now we'll go over overview of Kiva micro lending program. Um, I'm going to go over a brief overview of what the process looks like and maybe give like an illustrative example because we've had a few of these be fully funded already. So the Kiva micro lending program, the application can take about two hours. Um, it's a quick online application that asks for personal like demographic information, but also personal and business finance information. And then there's a narrative. There's three short answer questions, which probably takes the most time to, to write out where you're describing your story, your business story, and what you would use the loan for. Uh, and this will populate a public profile that people could read um, and could inspire them to lend to you. So once you submit your application on the Kiva website, the Kiva team will review it um, and underwrite your loan. 
And then if you decide to accept the phone that they approve for you, sorry, my dog's barking in the background. Um, then you go into a private fundraising period of about 15 days. And this is what how Kiva has your interest loans because this is their social underwriting process. And so they're looking to see 10 to 15 people within your community, your family, your friends lend to you. Um, and that demonstrates community support for your business and your loan. And so once um, you reach that kind of milestone and demonstrate community support, your profile on the Kiva website will become public and people from around the world can view it and lend to you. So these are people that, you know, don't know you necessarily. Uh, you'll have 30 days to reach your, to fundraise these loans uh, and meet your, the total loan amount, at which point Kiva will send you via PayPal the loan amount. And within 30 days of receiving the funds, you begin repayment. And just to, to clarify, I should have said this in the beginning, the city of Burlington is matching. So anyone that loans you money, the city will be matching those dollars as well. So to give an example of how this looks in practice, we had um, a new business, Mas Comida, which is at the farmer's market and also a new vendor in the Church Street cart, um, the Church Street Marketplace cart vendor program. Uh, Sylvia applied for one of these loans. We assisted her with like crafting the pitch to make it really compelling so that people around the world would want to lend. Um, we supported her, you know, through advertising on Instagram, her own, and then we would amplify that through the Love Burlington Instagram so that she could get her private lenders within the community. And then it opened up to the public and her loan was fully funded within, I'd say, one to two days. So it moved really quickly. You have 45 days total, but what we're seeing that moves really quickly because our community is very supportive of new entrepreneurs. Um, now, Sylvia has her cart on Church Street. You may have seen it if you're out there late nights. You may have seen her in the farmer's market as well, and she's already started repaying. All right, so that's the Kiva program. Happy to go more in detail. Um, if you have any questions, but I will hand it over to Will to talk about our larger program. Thanks, Johanna. The only thing I'd say about the Kiva program is we were pretty amazed at how quickly these get fully funded. Once it hits the public fundraising period, we're seeing money come in from Australia, China, South, you know, like it's just crazy the network that Kiva has and how many people want to support these small micro loans. So really cool to see kind of where the money's coming from and how much interest there is around the world to support small entrepreneurs. Um, now I'm going to talk about our larger program. This is treated more like a traditional loan program, but uh, we tried to kind of reduce some of the, the barriers that you may find as a new business looking to access capital. Um, this program, there's really two parts. The, uh, the first part is really a qualitative uh, evaluation. We are looking to see, you know, what your business would use the loan for, but we really want to see, you know, sustainability impacts, how this would support um, women. Is this a women-owned business or a business that is hiring women or uh, catered to serving women? How this would support the BIPOC community? Is this a BIPOC-owned business or a business hiring BIPOC employees? Um, and then just kind of the commitment, there are additional points given to entrepreneurs who are working with a business advisor, be it CVOEO, SCORE, CWE, Mercy Connections, just how committed is the individual to the business. Unlike traditional loan programs, we decided not to have, we, we don't pull credit and we have no credit requirement because we see that as a barrier to a lot of uh, newer businesses and um, looking at our BIPOC community, accessing traditional capital. So there is no credit score requirement. We are focused more on the character of the entrepreneur. Um, and then once our team made up of some city employees and some of our micro business partners evaluates that phase one piece, um, if the applicant moves on, they'll move on to the phase two, which is the finances. We have a underwriting committee made up of local um, banking professionals who are helping us underwrite these loans. So for phase two, we would be requesting things like a balance sheet, a profit and loss statement, and some financial projections. 
And the goal of the underwriting committee is just to uh, make sure that the business is able to repay the loan because the whole goal of the revolving loan program is as a business repays their loan, we loan it out to the next business. So that phase two piece is just to make sure that the business has the cash flow to repay the loan so that we can lend it out to the next business. Um, once the uh, loan gets approved by the underwriting committee, we set up a loan closing um, with some closing documents and cut a check for the loan for the entrepreneur. And then similar to Kiva, within 30 days, the repayment process would begin at no interest. Um, what, what I just wanted to say is like kind of the goal of these two programs is we'd love to see someone who's a newer business, maybe a startup business, take advantage of the Kiva program. And then as they grow and look to bring on new employees, they could apply for this larger revolving loan fund program. And then at that point, they would be ready and in a good position to access traditional capital, going to one of our banks or credit unions and getting that $100,000 plus loan. So we're really trying to, you know, use these two programs to educate borrowers and kind of move them up, up that capital ladder and allow them to access larger loans down the road. Um, Joe, anything you wanted to add to that larger program before we move on to questions? No, I think you, you covered it well. So we're just right, thinking so we'll of pausing here quickly to see if there are any questions. This is uh, Simeon. I've got a couple of questions, but I will defer to others first if they do. So does anybody have any questions? No? Okay. Well, um, I'm just curious, would you mind just bouncing back to the first slide where you kind of gave the overview of both programs? Yeah, one second. Great. Um, I, just a couple of things I thought might be interesting to know and to clarify. So the an applicant an applicant needs to be either starting or expanding a business in Burlington, but they don't necessarily have to live in Burlington. Is that true? That is correct. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. Um, you do not have to live in Burlington. You just have have to have you know a Burlington presence, whether it be a spot on Church Street for a food cart or um, a brick and mortar or a home-based business would also qualify. Um, so yeah, you don't have to live in Burlington. Okay. Would, uh, not to put you on the spot, but would uh, attending the farmer's market also qualify, the Burlington farmer's market? Yeah, I think the way that we are looking at this currently is, is the majority of your business being done in Burlington if you are more of a market vendor? which I know is a little bit tough to quantify, but um, if you did like one market a year in Burlington and primarily do business in other towns or states, then um, we would not qualify that as a Burlington business. But if you were only in the Burlington farmer's market or the majority of your business was done in that market, then we would consider that to be a Burlington business. So there's a little bit of nuance there. Great. Thanks, Will. Didn't mean to complicate it for you. No, um, and um, uh, just to clarify too, that the Kiva program is that also only for for Burlington focused businesses. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, similar to the other program, it is only for Burlington businesses for the, for our support in mm -hmm. in applying and also for the city matching. However, as we have shared with uh, some businesses that are outside of Burlington that are interested, Kiva is a global organization and anyone can apply for a zero interest loan via Kiva. It just won't have the city matching and we okay. won't, because of how our positions are funded, we won't be able to, to support them in that application process. Okay, that's, that's good to know, helpful. Rhonda's asking, does South Burlington count? Sadly, it does not. Sorry, Rhonda. Okay. Uh, I also wonder, uh, can you explain a little bit more about Sharia law and um, why that's important to mention here? Yeah, absolutely. So we've worked with, over the years, a number of Muslim-owned businesses that practice Sharia law which uh, due to their religion doesn't allow them to take 
interest bearing loans. And so that's part of the reason we worked with two um, brick and mortar Muslim owned businesses in town as we were designing this program to make sure that they would be able to apply and access these funds. And so we've structured it um, at zero interest um, and the program the way we did in order to be able to serve you know, many of our Muslim owned businesses that can't take on traditional loans that have interest. That's great. That's great. I know that's been a missing component for a while now in, in the community. So that's great to see that acknowledged. Um, those are all the questions I have. Any other questions from people or follow up before we turn it over to community capital? I actually had a quick question for you. Yeah, guys. Um, for the Kiva um, micro lending program, um, if a business is able to raise $15,000, would you match $15,000 or you would match up to $15,000? So if they raise 10, you would match 5,000. So. It's happening simultaneously. That's a really good question. Um, so uh, if Kiva approves them for 15, they can only fundraise loans up to 15. Um, and so the, the city dollars matching just makes the process go a lot faster. You actually need less loans from fewer individuals um, in order to reach your 15. Um, and so the city, for every dollar that I as an individual would lend, the city would match like at least two to one, et cetera. Um, until you reach that 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 loan amount that Kiva has approved you for. Um, a one side note that I should should add is that if should you not reach the loan amount you're approved for, then you do not get anything. So it's not like oh I I was able um, if people lent me up to ten thousand. Um, if you don't reach the fifteen you're approved for, then you don't get any funds. So that's an important important thing to note as well. Yeah, luckily that hasn't happened yet, and hopefully, hopefully it won't. But um, you know, just in in practice, say I was approved for the full fifteen thousand, I ask my brother to be the first um, private lender. He lends twenty five dollars. The city right now is providing a three to one match, so we would kick in seventy five dollars simultaneously. So then, after that twenty five dollar um, loan from my brother there'd be a hundred dollars of the 15,000 raised. And this is why we're seeing the loan, people meet their loan amounts within two days of feeling. That's great, that's good detail to know. And um, out of curiosity, I'm assuming the people that um, invested, if it, worst case scenario, if, it, if they didn't reach their goal, they would all get their money back. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So anyone that's lent, if the goal is not met, that money comes back to you. You have like when you lend, you create a Cuban account, um, and also when when lender borrowers start repayment, uh, your the lenders are repaid in small monthly increments as well into their Cuban account, and then you can either you know withdraw that or you can lend to a new new borrower. And just uh, to clarify a previous point, um, if they didn't reach their goal, would they be able to restart a new campaign? Yes. Yes. Um, if you don't reach your goal, you can restart a new campaign. Um, you can't have two, and then you can't have two Kiva loans going at once. But if you do get a Kiva loan and then you repay it, you can reapply a new campaign and do it over again as well. So there's no limit there. Great. Great. Yeah. From the uh, loan per loaning perspective, is actually pretty cool. I, um, you know, testing this out, loan to Sylvia for her food cart on Church Street. And last yesterday, she made her first repayment. So I got, I think it was like $2.10 um, repaid back. But as she continues to repay, she's paying off the friends and family, the city that matched, um, and the um, public, you know, everyone on the Kiva platform. And so that money will slowly be repaid back into my account. And then I can choose to loan it out to the next uh, borrower on Kiva. Or you could always choose to, transfer the funds to your bank if you wanted to take the funds out. That's great, that's great. Any other questions before we move on to community capital? Take the silence as we're good to go. Okay, well, Will, uh, Johanna, thank you so much. Um, and I'm 
I wouldn't doubt there'll be more questions uh, coming as as everybody kind of works through their presentation. Great. So um, now I'd like to turn it over to Abby Solomon from uh, Community Capital of Vermont. Um, Abby, feel free to take it away. Thanks, Samantha. Hi, I'm Abby Solomon. I'm the loan officer at Community Capital um, for two more days. I'm actually transitioning out and I will explain how to get in contact with everybody there um, towards the end of this. Um, this is something I've never said before. We're more of a traditional lender <laughs> than what you just learned about, but we are not a traditional lender. We are a um, nonprofit mission lender. Um, we're a micro lender that serves all of Vermont businesses. And our mission is to serve businesses that are having difficulty finding lending through traditional means. So um, going to a bank or credit union or, or those type of lenders, which is usually where a, a business first goes to. Uh, and you may be having difficulty because you're a startup, because you're looking for a $3,000 loan. Uh, you may have some credit questions, uh, issues that the, the bank is not comfortable with. Your collateral might not be as strong as a bank is, is comfortable with. And that's why we exist. Um, so we are a micro lender. To us, that means a thousand to a hundred thousand. Um, our kind of mid range or, or comfortable range is, is right in the middle there. That's kind of where, where we mostly lend. Um, and as I said, we, we, lend across the entire state. We're not focused on any specific industry. Uh, it's really the, the the type of business and the, the reason you come to us is, is what our mission is, is um, if you just can't find lending elsewhere. Um, we only do business lending, so we can't do any sort of personal lending, but um, but we have a big impact across the state doing, doing what we do. Um, so we can lend for most anything. Uh, we have some limitations with construction. Um, we are an SBA micro lender. That's one of, we, we pull up our lending capital from a bunch of different sources. One of those sources is the SBA micro lending program. Um, and they don't allow us to lend for construction or um, like big fit out. Such, um, so, we, that is something that um, sometimes we can partner with other uh, lenders for, or um, often there's ways that you can work with your landlord to, to work that into your, um, your rent or things like that. Um, if it's a small thing, you need $2,000 to put a sink in. Um, we do have some capital that we can use for those things, but it just can't be a significant portion of, of your loan. Um, and we unfortunately cannot uh, lend for cannabis. Uh, we we partnered um, heavily with the federal government. So um, that is not something we've been able to figure out how to do. Um, but we can, if you're solely CBD and you're licensed, you have license and um, it is a, um, of course my dog has been quiet this whole time. Um, <laughs> uh, one second, let me shut the door. Um, so, uh, so we have been able to, to lend for, for CBD. Um, there are things that you'll have to prove, um, that, that you're doing it legally, that you, you have testing, all those things, but we have been able to, to do that. Um, and then other than that, like even we can do, uh, refinancing debt, we can do, um, working capital, uh, and then equipment. Um, pretty pretty much everything else. Um, we do have a requirement for collateral, so that's something that that is we have to discuss. But we can be more creative with that. Um, we're going to look for your at your business assets first and see if that is sufficient collateral to provide. We're also going to be requiring a personal guarantee, so that your, this loan will go on your credit, uh, and in, hopefully it will help it. Um, and we will, you'll be personally obligated to pay the loan back if your business can't for some reason. Um, but so collateral wise, we can look at additional personal guarantees. So that's called a third party guarantor. It's not a, uh, another owner of your business. 
but it's somebody who's who's contributing their personal guarantee towards the, the collateral of the loan. We can look at personal assets also, um, but we are a lot more open and again, can be creative with that. So um, don't be scared of that conversation. Uh, I know that that collateral is, it can be questionable because you're not sure how much your business might be actually worth, but it's worth having the conversation and um, and we can we can take different approaches on that. Um, so when I said we're more of a traditional lender than before, what I meant is we have a very standard application process that is what you're going to see at a bank or at other types of business lenders. Um, so it's an application that that you just fill out and then there's a list of required documents that you also need to provide. Uh, the two big things are a business plan and a, two years of cash flow projections. Uh, so that's where working with someone like Simeon or SBDC can really help uh, put those together and, um, and make sure they're strong and, and ready to, to submit when you're ready to submit for an application. Uh, if you're an existing business, we'll need two years of financials or since you're starting. I know a lot of people or a lot of businesses that come to us have been around for a year and they're worried about that two year thing. That's not something that that is a, a deterrent to us. It's just whatever existence you, you have. Um, and then we'll look for also some personal financial information. So uh, two years of personal taxes, there's a personal finance statement that's already embedded in our application. Um, and we'll be running your personal credit uh, to, to look at. Uh, so from there, there, there's an underwriting process. Um, you will be going through that with our uh, loan officer, which was me, but in the transition will be um, our uh, executive director until someone else is found. Um, and traditionally that's really been a back and forth. It's not something you submit and then you just don't hear anything until till there's an approval or or an answer. Um, always do site visits. Uh, if if your business is not necessarily a, a location-based business, we'll we'll meet either on Zoom or in our office or something like that. And that's after had a chance to go through your business plan and your cash flow and uh, to just kind of round out what you've already submitted and, and ask more questions, but then also be available for you to ask more questions. Uh, so, and then when that underwriting process is complete, um, it goes to either internal up to 15,000 is a slightly more expedited process because we don't have to present that to a loan committee. And then anything over 15,000 has to go to a loan committee for approval. Um, I'm going to just loop back. I forgot we have two different types of products. So we have our term loans and then we have lines of credit. Our lines of credit are up to 50,000 um, and they are a revolving line of credit. So they're 12 month revolving line of credit. And it's a really great tool for a business if you have seasonality, um, if you are. A, a restaurant that that has slower seasons. Um, if you're manufacturing and you need to make a really large purchase for for those products before you're actually selling them, um, so so that's another option that we have. The application underwriting, all that is exactly the same. It's just a different type of product. The thing about our lines of credit, it's not like a credit card, and it is but can be different than what a bank offers because it's a 12 month so there's a pay down requirement. Um, and so month to month, you pay interest on what you've taken out. And then at some point over that period of time, you have to pay your uh, all your principal down to zero and leave it there for 30 days uh, in order to qualify for renewal. And then after that 12 months, if you met that 30 day pay down, um, we'll just ask for your updated financials, your uh, profit and loss, your balance, your most recent taxes, do a quick review, and then we can renew it for the, the following year. Uh, so that that is, and sometimes I'll put those together. So if you need to get your business started, you need a term loan for 50000 but 
looking at what your your business is and that there will be a, a good need for some working capital in three months or six months and that will be a repetitive need throughout uh, your existence and we'll put in a line of credit in there too so so it's it's definitely helpful to to a lot of businesses um so if you're approved after that there's a few other additional things that you'll need to provide we'll need you'll need to have insurance um all your licensing um there's a few forms that that will have you complete uh, depending on what your collateral is there might be some additional um steps that that need to be taken and then we can close as soon as those things are provided and and issue a check uh the terms that we offer are bet um, between eight and ten and a half percent right now, um, up to six years. On the and it's impossible to give you really uh, who, what a range, or what most loans are for 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 terms. It's really um, it depends. It's very dependent on what your business is. So that's a great thing that we can offer. We're really specialized to what your business is, and we really consider your business and how what we can offer to assist that business it's not that this is what we offer everybody who's looking for a ten thousand dollar loan it's what's really going to work for you, for your business um and then another great thing that we offer is we have a free business advisor on staff that's available to all our borrowers uh david is um can work with you it's not required it's just another support system for you um, and he can do anything from he's he's a QuickBook Pro trainer, so he often works with people on their QuickBooks to either get it set up or how have they have questions as they're managing it. Um, he can assist there, but then um, he's he's can, can do and has done everything else. So um, you are a sole entrepreneur right now, but you're hiring someone. You need to know what what things you need for that, David can help you get there. Um, so it's it's just another tool. I know, I'm sure many are already working with a great business advisor because there's so many in the state, but it's just an additional um, asset for you that we can provide. Um, I, I guess the other question I always get is timeline. Um, and that's, impossible for me to say if i was continuing with the organization but it's going to it's i can't really speak for the future but traditionally you know it's we say six to eight weeks um to get to loan committee um often it's quicker than that sometimes it's longer uh we're an incredibly small organization um and so there's not many people uh, there's only one loan officer on staff so tomorrow we can get three applications and all that can blow out. But um, generally we'll give you kind of an idea and definitely look in after you've submitted an application, uh, look through what you have. So if there's anything that you need to additionally supply right at the beginning, that you can be working on that in that time period so that it's not, um, not delayed any further. And then when we are actively underwriting, um, that at that point can give you a firm, uh, more of a firm uh, timeline. And usually when I do a site visit, I already know what loan committee, if if your loan has to go to a loan committee, I'll know that date. So I'll, so you'll have that date in mind at that point when we, we have that. Um, so quickly, I'm just gonna show you how to connect with us. Um, our website, uh, let's see here is pretty easy to manage, but we have this uh, loan inquiry form here. And this isn't our application, but it's a um, plug and submit. Uh, so it, it just has some information about what your business is, where you're located and contact information. Uh, so just go through this, the starred ones are the things that we need you to fill in and then submit this and then this will go directly to uh at the moment it will go directly to our executive director who is um is managing this and then he'll get back in touch with you and go from there 
Um, some other resources um, that I can show you here. So our business application is, it's a 10 page application. It's actually pretty simple. Um, it's a fillable PDF. This is also on our website. Uh, so contact information, uh, financial, what you need. Um, but the useful, well, all of it's useful, but uh, a checklist that we have, and this really can be can, reflects what a lot of business lenders are looking for is on the first two pages of it. So this first page has anything if you're applying for a loan under 5,000, and then if you're applying for over 5,000, all these things are, are needed. So this is just a reference um, as you're putting together, if you're looking, going to be applying for capital. Um, and uh, and it's definitely what, what we need. So um, really the thing that takes the most time is that people don't really look at this checklist and they'll just submit what they, think is complete and there'll be something that's missing and it's that back and forth between um, myself or the loan officer and then the applicant to get that that item in that truly is the thing that takes the longest so uh, pay attention to this this checklist uh, it's definitely um, will save you time if you have everything on this when you submit it uh, the other thing that's also on our website is a fact sheet. So this is just some answers and question, uh, questions and answers about what we do and um, how we do it. So uh, this is a good good reference also. Um, and I can put all this in the links in the um, chat. And um, so that's that. Uh, I can definitely answer any questions. Does so anybody have any questions for Abby? Um, you can either uh, just um, unmute yourself and ask, or you can put it in the chat. Either one will work. I guess we are okay for the moment. And um, I think maybe there'll be some questions uh, perhaps after everybody completes their presentation. Great. Well, thank you, Abby. Much appreciated. Um, so I'd like to turn it over now to Ben Green with the Vermont Community Loan Fund. Ben? Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ben Green. I uh, have a unique, unique title here, uh, Business Navigator and Resource Manager. Um, but essentially, I'm, I'm part of our business advisory team here at Vermont Community Loan Fund. Um, so who is uh, VCLF or Vermont Community Loan Fund? Um, we are a, a nonprofit. I, I guess I'll, I'll caveat everything by saying we are very similar to uh, community capital. So there might be a lot of things that Abby just kind of went through that I'll probably end up repeating. Um, but we're a, a, a nonprofit community development financial institution, also known as a CDFI. And our goal is to uh, create opportunities for local business owners with the intention of uh, fostering healthier communities and financial stability for all Vermonters. Um, we provide pretty flexible financing and business advisory services to um, communities who have historically been excluded, both illegally and legally, uh, from commercial lending. Our primary work is with local businesses. Um, we also work with a lot of early care and learning providers, community organizations, nonprofits, and larger affordable housing developers. Um, and as of May of 2023, our organization has approximately 318 outstanding loans worth about a total of $31.5 million. Oops. Um, so our mission, like I mentioned, is, is to help create more opportunities for Vermonters, um, help Vermonters succeed in, in whatever it is that their business goals are. Um, and to try and create uh, healthier communities overall for, for anyone living in the state. Um, our, our loan fund has, has been able to achieve a, a good amount of success since starting up about 35 years ago. 
Um, a lot of the times when we are looking to, to work with small business owners or nonprofits or community development centers or anything along those lines, um, we are looking for, for certain um, mission goals. Um, we're always looking for uh, to support small businesses who are trying to create um, high quality jobs, offer additional child care um, slots, um, provide affordable housing for low wealth Vermonters, um, or offer essential services that are a lot of the times hard to come by for a lot of our rural communities. Um, we also love to support, um, like I mentioned, kind of traditionally excluded communities. So that includes women owned businesses, um, uh, BIPOC owned businesses, new American owned businesses, um, or veteran owned businesses. Um, we also a lot of the times aim to try and help preserve kind of Vermont's natural working landscape and the businesses who kind of make up that, that landscape, um, as well as a lot of downtown um, organizations that kind of provide that, that vibrant community feel that a lot of us are able to enjoy. Um, in, in the 35 years we've been around, we've loaned about $128 million, uh, which has helped preserve uh, almost 8,000 8, jobs for Vermonters, uh, create or preserve, I guess I should say, um, has helped rehabilitate homes for uh, about 4,700 households um, and have helped create over 5,000 childcare slots. Um, our loan portfolio is kind of made up of um, all those different types of organizations that I just listed out. Um, while uh, the majority of our dollar amount ends up going to affordable housing developers just because of how large they are, I will say that majority of our loans in terms of the, the actual number of them end up going to small businesses throughout the state. Um, there is also a sizable portion of our portfolio that goes towards community facilities and nonprofits as well as those, those child care providers. Um, and, and one thing that some of you guys might be curious about, although some of you might not be, is kind of how we end up getting our money. Um, so uh, at VCLF, we're relatively proud of being um, people powered. So majority of our funds actually end up coming from individuals, um, either uh, as investments or as don donations. Um, we also get a, a good amount of, of government funding, um, kind of like Abby mentioned through either the, the SBA or the USDA. Um, as well as, um, you know, get sources of funding from, from other organizations like uh, religious groups, um, local businesses, uh, or, or local nonprofits and foundations. Um, we do have a variety of loan programs. I, I kind of just ended up including on here some of the loan programs that I thought were going to be most specific for this group or most applicable, I guess. Um, our, our yeah. Ben, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, uh, are, are you, do you want to share your presentation? Oh, geez. Sorry. I've been going through the whole thing thinking I was. That's okay. <laughs> no, that's okay. Great. Thanks. Uh, there we go. Thank you for that. Um, so we do have a, a couple of different loan programs that I think would be applicable for this group. Um, the first is kind of just our, our general business loan program. Um, it's really meant for any Vermont-based business. Um, doesn't matter how large they are, um, you know, what kind of legal structure they have, what developmental stage they're in. Um, we're happy to work with, with uh, any business so long as it is a, a Vermont-based business. Um, those, those general business loans can be used for pretty much any business related purpose. Um, like Abby kind of mentioned, we are exclusively a commercial lender. Um, so, so long as the project that you're hoping to help get financing for has to do with your business, we're happy to work with you on it. Um, that could include things like purchasing property or real estate, um, purchasing equipment, working capital, inventory, um, whatever you need. Uh, loans also can be used for restructuring debt. Um, although I know there's, it, it, that can kind of be a, a circumstantial thing for our loan team. Um, loans for first time borrowers can go up to $350,000. Um, although again, that's going to be heavily dependent on kind of some of the applicants, um, unique characteristics, um, and loans can be as, as small as you want. I, I don't know if we've ever done a loan under a thousand dollars. So I, I would kind of guess that that's our, our minimum amount, but, um, for our, our general business loans, we're pretty flexible on that point. 
Um, we also have some other specialty programs. So one of them is our, our trails loan program. Um, that particular loan program is specifically intended for businesses or organizations that are um, geared towards Vermont, Vermont's outdoor recreational um, industry. Um, those loans, again, can be used for a wide variety of business purposes. Uh, the loan amount for those loans is a little bit smaller, and um, that particular loan program offers a slightly better interest rate um, than our, our general business loan program. Um, another program I wanted to touch on, even though it's actually currently not active, is our, our Justice Forward Fund loan program. Um, that loan program is uh, a newer product of ours. It was originally launched in September of last year. Um, it's specifically meant for Vermonters of Colors and, and New Americans. Um, the, the loan program is a little bit unique and at least for our organization was a, a little bit, a little bit more of a game changer. It's a little bit more in line with, um, with some of the other loan programs that have been talked about here already. Um, those loans are, are maxed out at, at $40,000. They have, um, no fees associated with them. Um, interest rates vary from zero to 3%. Um, and again, those loans can pretty much be used for um, any business related purpose with the exception of refinancing debt. Um, when we were designing that particular loan program, our goal was to help um, preserve wealth as much as possible in communities who kind of traditionally had wealth extracted from them, um, at least from the lending industry. Um, and, and like I mentioned, we're not unfortunately currently accepting applications for that loan program. Um, we had actually run through our funding for it um, over the course of about nine months. Our goal is to try and relaunch the program with some minor tweaks to it um, sometime later this year, hopefully in the fall. Um, and when we do that, I'm sure we will um, announce it as, as much as possible to the world. Um, to touch on some of the, the other aspects of kind of all of these applications, applications for any of these loan programs. Um, generally speaking, we are gonna ask for um, a pretty standard set of documents. Um, so it'll include things like um, the application itself. We'll usually look for um, one year's worth of financial projections. We'll ask for a balance sheet on the business. Um, and if the business has a uh, lease, we would ask for that as well. Uh, and lastly, we'll generally end up asking for um, at least one year's worth of tax returns, uh, both business and personal. Um, there are, depending on which loan program you apply for, some other things we might end up asking for. Um, so for our, our uh, usually we'll ask for a business plan, although that's not required for the Justice Forward Fund loans. Um, we might also end up asking for um, up to three years worth of historical financial information um, as well as uh, additional years of, of tax returns. Um, our, our, ap our application and underwriting process, our goal is to always get a response to an applicant within four to six weeks. Um, there are times where we do get kind of a little bit backlog, particularly as we've been launching some of these um, newer, more popular loan programs. Um, but generally speaking, our loan team's pretty good about keeping in contact with applicants, um, both because they'll often have questions for you, but they also just wanna make sure that you don't feel like you're kind of left in the dark and don't know what's going on. Um, so I, I have a couple slides here for a couple different of our borrowers. Um, one of them is, is just to give you an example of, of the types of businesses that we end up working with. Uh, one of them was Fat Toad Farm. Um, I don't know if some of you have heard of them or not. They were a family-owned farm, um, started back in 2007. Um, we had a pretty long relationship with them where we were kind of trying to support them through the multiple phases of the business, whether that was um, purchasing equipment or in the going through the process of selling their herd. Um, the business was actually able to achieve a great amount of success. They were featured in kind of national programs like Oprah Magazine. Um, they won a bunch of local awards as well. Um, I know, at least from the National Specialty Food Association. Um, and they were able to sell their business actually to another borrower of ours, Butterfly, Butterfly Bakery, um, a couple of years ago. Um, oh, sorry. We also work pretty regularly with, um, like I mentioned, affordable housing developers. Our biggest one of our, our, 
our, our biggest borrower, I guess I would say, is Champlain Housing Trust. Um, they're just the biggest borrower in the portfolio, both because of the size of the projects that they do and the number of projects that we end up working with them on. Um, we've really enjoyed working with them, usually because of their their um, best practices and, and the model that they have as a, a housing trust in general, um, and tend to have worked on them or have worked with them on a number of different projects throughout the northwestern part of Vermont, um, but mainly in, in the Chittenden area. Um, another one of our borrowers is uh, Little Dipper's Doodle Child Care Center. They are based out of St. Johnsbury. They have 165 kids uh, who are currently attending their school from ages five or below. Um, they are a five-star program um, offering, or working with families who are need kind of a, a wide variety of support. Um, again, this is another pretty long partnership we've had with them. I think our, our loan is over 10 years old with them um, and have helped them kind of go through various difficult points in, in their business, including um, during COVID when everybody was struggling, but I think childcare in particular was, was facing a particularly tough time. Um, and then the, the last bar I wanted to mention was um, Hunger Mountain Co-op. Um, they are a former, former borrower at this point, um, but we really enjoyed working with them, both because of the number of employees they have. They have about 170 in the area um, because of the number of, or the amount of local um, produce and products that they end up purchasing, I think from over 500 local vendors, um, as well as the immense community support that they have with over 8,000 co-op members. Um, we helped them finance some of their freezer purchases and other equipment purchases. And um, actually since paying off their loan, they've become a, an impact investor with us. Um, I know, I know um, Simeon and Sophia included my contact info on the, the other set of slides, but um, here it is again. And uh, I guess I'll just take a pause and, and see if anybody has any particular questions. For me. So I've got a couple of questions, but I will defer to everybody else. So does anybody else have any questions for Ben? Okay. So uh, and a couple of questions for you. So um, I know that, you know, we've, we've collaborated with different clients before. Uh, I'm wondering if you can kind of share um, you know, the additional benefits of working with VCLF. So if somebody comes to you and they're not a borrower yet, but they may need help and or they're, uh, they become a borrower, how are you able to work with them to help them move forward? Yeah, uh, so on top of um, providing what I would consider, you know, pretty flexible um, capital, um, we also have uh, free advisory services similar to, to community capital. Um, so our, our business advisory team, which right now is just me, although we're um, on the verge of adding a second member, um, uh, is able to work uh, completely for free um, with any interested applicants or any existing borrowers of ours. Um, in some cases, we can actually continue to work with you well after you pay off a loan with us. Um, and generally speaking, we're, we're able and willing to work with um, anybody who's interested on, on really any business related projects that they might be tackling. So uh, I can do anything from working with you on, on helping fill out a, a loan application um, to writing a business plan, um, putting together different types of financial statements, um, all things that are kind of geared towards the, the general application process. But I'm also happy to work with you on other things like um, you know, setting up a, a bookkeeping system or putting together a marketing plan, um, figuring out how to go through the, the hiring process if you're ex an expanding business. Um, so, and, and, you know, one thing that I, I will say is, is our, our loan team, our, our advisory team is um, what I would say comprised of mostly generalists. So um, while we are more than happy to help work with you on, on any particular project that your business might be facing, uh, there are certainly going to be times where, um, our skills and expertise and experience don't really match what you might end up needing. So in those cases, we are happy to try and connect you with a, a more specialized expert, um, somebody like a, a lawyer or an accountant who might be able to answer very specific questions or help you out with very specific issues that your business is dealing with. Um, in some instances, we might even be able to 
um, provide some grant funding to help pay for that third party assistance. Um, but generally speaking, we are, uh, we are just kind of a, a support team that's here to work with you kind of at whatever phase of the business you're at or, or help you deal with whatever problems you might be taking on at a given point in time. Um, I will also say our, our services are completely optional. So um, even though it might be recommended that you work with us, you don't necessarily need to unless you want to. Um, and generally speaking, um, you know, our, our team is, is happy to be as involved as, as any client of ours wants them to be. So happy to meet with you on a weekly or even, um, you know, multiple times a weekly basis or happy to just kind of check in once a month, once a quarter. Um, again, just whatever, whatever is best for our borrowers um, is how we're kind of helping, ha happy to help serve. Um, and, and I will also say, and I think this is probably true for, for at the very least community capital as well. Um, our loan team is uh, on top of just being very friendly. They are also a very understanding and flexible group. Um, so if you are a borrower with us and let's say your business for one reason or another falls on hard times or um, you're not able to ramp up or make implement changes as quickly as you thought you might be able to, um, our loan team is always happy to talk, always happy to kind of rework the payment repayment process, um, you know, if the business needs it, maybe even, um, uh, you know, put it, put the loan into a deferral period or something along those lines. Um, I think our loan team mostly just cares about transparency and, and um, communication. So, um, yeah, just wanted to, to say that about that as well. Great. Thank you, Ben. Um, Sorry if I missed it before, but um, are you able to speak to what the interest rates range and, and closing costs and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so right now, our, our for our just general business loan program, I think our, our interest rate is, uh, I forget if it's 8% or eight and a quarter, um, but it's either one of those two. We do have some specialty loan programs, like I mentioned before. So the TRAILS program, I believe the interest rate for that program is 6%. Um, we have another loan program called the Sprout Loan Program that's specifically intended for agricultural based businesses, um, particularly newer or developing businesses, but I think any ag based businesses is, would be eligible for that program. That loan program has 1% um, interest rates for the first year and then 2% interest rates for the remainder of the loan. Um, our Justice Forward Fund Loan Program has varying interest rates, kind of dependent on an applicant's personal financial situation, but interest rates for those can be as low as 0% and as high as 3%. Um, generally, the, the fees associated, um, so the, uh, I will say that the Justice, Forward Fo the Justice Forward Fund Program has no fees associated with it. Um, some of our other, or I think all of our other loan programs have generally a $50 application fee and then a 1% closing fee. Um, a lot of the times that closing fee will actually just be taken directly out of the loan itself. So usually that's um, not even something that the, the applicant has to necessarily offer up for out of pocket. Um, and, and just some other things to note. Um, again, I feel like I keep stealing from you, Abby, but um, we are a little bit more flexible than traditional lenders when it comes to things like um, collateral, when it comes to things like debt to income ratio, minimum revenue amount, um, minimum number of years in operation. Um, so uh, again, we're, we're always trying to, to ultimately, our goal is to, to fill the void of, of you know, working with underbanked groups, uh, communities, populations. So we will always try and be as flexible as possible. There are some policies that we have in place that we unfortunately always need to end up abiding by. But um, generally speaking, I think our loan team is pretty good when trying to meet people where they're at, um, you know, either from a, a financial standpoint or even just from a literal geographic standpoint. So, um, yeah. Ben, um, are there any um, prepayment penalties? If you pay your loan no. off early? No, um, there are none for any of our loan programs. So, um, and while I know, you know, 
different people have have different mindsets about that. You know, there are certain times where it feels like it makes more sense to try and prepay a loan than others. So, for instance, if you have a, a, a loan with us through our general loan program where you might have an 8% interest rate, I think when you can, it's always best to try and prepay that early. Um, but there are some times where if you have a justice forward fund loan and you have a 0% interest rate, it might actually make sense to, to string that out. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's, um, you're not paying any more by, by paying it over a longer period, a longer term. So, um, but no, to answer your question, we don't have any cases. Do you have any, um, lines of credit options? Yeah. Um, so again, similar to community capital, we do both term loans and lines of credit. Um, our lines of credit are a, a little bit trickier, um, again. Uh, similar to community capital, we usually do one-year terms for uh, lines of credit. We are always happy to renew a line of credit with a borrower so long as they're kind of um, comfortable and able to, to stay on top of things and make the payments when necessary. Um, for our lines of credit, I, I do think we are a little bit more limited with the amounts that we can go up to. Um, I don't know what our maximum amount is for a, a general business line of credit, although I I can't think of any existing line of credits that we have that are over $100,000. Um, and then a general rule that we have with those as well is um, once a year for a one month period, uh, you're, you're supposed to be able to allow your, your line of credit to rest or basically you're, you're supposed to have it repaid in full and not draw any of it. Um, so the line of credit stuff can get a little bit more complicated than term loans just in the sense that it requires a little bit more um, management from the borrower to, to, to understand where things stand and to make sure that they're on, on top of, of whatever repayment process has been put in place. Um, but that is something that we end up offering. I'm not sure what rates we have on our lines of credit right now. My guess would be that it would be in line with our general business loan. So my guess would be it would be somewhere around 8%. Um, but uh, if anybody's interested in, in getting an actual number on that, I can certainly follow up with them. Great. And I'm sorry if you mentioned this before, but, um, um, oh, I just blanked on my question. Uh, yeah, give me a second. I'll come back to you with, with another one. But um, do you collaborate with um, other lenders? Yeah, definitely. Um, we're very happy to be to to work with. I mean, there are multiple instances I know where we've we've worked with Community Capital. I, I know we are working with um, with Burlington as well. Um, so, and there are other CDFIs, other credit unions, other banks in the state that we have definitely collaborated with. Um, a lot of the times, we actually are brought into deals from other lenders um, to try and help those lenders mitigate their risk just because we can um, take a little bit more risk when it comes to who we're lending to or what our lending policies are. So I know there are times where we'll maybe come in with a smaller dollar amount um, or just kind of, again, help fill a gap, help make other, other um, lenders a little bit more comfortable with the deal. But we are certainly happy to, to work with any other organization, um, you know, assuming that they are happy to work with us as well. Thank you. Um, I did remember my other question. That is, if, if somebody has a, a loan out with VCLF, and can they continue to come back to VCLF for funding in the future? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I did mention that we have um, certain caps for in terms of loan amounts for our different loan programs. Um, but you, uh, any borrower is able to come back and, and take out a second loan with us, even while their first loan still might be in the repayment process. Um, I believe our, it, it kind of depends on, on where different money is being drawn from. Um, so for example, if, if somebody ended up getting a, a justice forward fund loan through us, um, uh, we allow any individual business to have up to $40,000 worth of funding through that particular loan program at a given time. But in terms of total funding, I think um, borrowers can go up to um, $500,000 at any given point in time. Um, and to be honest, sometimes it makes sense for applicants um, 
to start off a little bit smaller with us, both because it might just be more appropriate for their business, but a lot of times it also kind of helps you build that relationship with our organization, establish familiarity, kind of show us that you are a, a, a good borrower at the end of the day um, and might end up making a second application easier down the line sort of thing. Um, and just to jump back to the um, lending with uh, or partnering with other organizations on lending, um, I'll also say as an advisor, I'm more than happy to work with um, other advisors as well. Um, so if an uh, uh, individual business owner wants to spend some time working with Simeon as well as working with me or working with us together or whatever they want the relationship to be, um, our advisory team is more than happy to, to help um, either support or collaborate or um, whatnot with, with other advisors as well. Great. Thank you, Ben. Does anybody else have questions for Ben before we turn it over to general questions? No? Okay. Well, let's open it up to, for general questions. Uh, I, I, of course, have some that have come to mind as, I, as I've listened, but um, want to defer to others first. So does anybody have anything, uh, any general questions? Uh, 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 something that um, they maybe you didn't catch the first time or something that occurred to you after one of the lenders spoke. Feel free to either put it in the chat or um, unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. Okay, I will take that as a note. So um, I'll certainly take the opportunity to, to ask a few follow-up questions. Um, Rhonda says she's good. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Rhonda. Um, I guess, you know, just to circle back around for the, to the other lenders, I know I asked Ben about how you might collaborate with other lenders. And for those that are not familiar, uh, lenders might take a different, a second position on a loan. So I'm wondering if you can each maybe go around and talk about your ability to do that. And and for those who are not familiar with what second position may mean, maybe just define that. And I'll leave it open to anybody that would like to start. So feel free just to jump right in. I am happy to start here. Um, Thanks, Will. So we we will occasionally work with another, I guess what we would call like an alternative lender, like a VCLF and their Justice Forward Fund, given how similar the, the mission is to the mission of our program. But since we are really not trying to compete with traditional capital, you know, we recently had an application from a business that was approved for a quarter million dollar loan and also wanted to take out the max loan with us. And we ended up um, not approving them because we are not trying to compete with traditional banks and they were clearly able to get traditional capital. So in unique situations, we are willing to partner with another loan program, but generally not a traditional bank that's giving a business a larger loan. Um, so community capital as a micro lender, uh, often we can't lend for the complete the full project um so we do partner i wouldn't say often but uh, it is something that we can definitely do the the thing is is that our mission has to be addressed so um i i spoke of lending to businesses that can't find capital through traditional means but that also means can't find enough capital through traditional means um so i've, I've partnered up to four different lenders, which is not my favorite thing to do, but it's something that we can do. And we came in at the last, they needed $50,000 of working capital. And because the collateral had already been stretched so far that the other lenders just weren't able to lend that, that last bit. And we were able to come in and help. It was also a woman owned business. Um, they were low to moderate income. So so there was other pieces of our mission that were, were part of that. But we have definitely had like a business that was going to be manufacturing these large construction things and they needed, it was almost a bridge loan, uh, 75,000 that they needed for a couple of years, but it was clear that there was, there was nothing in our mission that, that they were addressing. So we just weren't able to assist them, even if it was 
our size and all those things. Um, so, so we do need to focus on mission, but what we're going to be looking for also is the collateral and as I spoke to, we can, we can be more creative with that, which means that we can be subordinate. And that means that um, when all the lenders are stacked up, if for some reason your business goes, isn't able to pay your loan back and we're looking at your business assets to recoup our lending, that we will be a lower, that, that let's say your bank is first, they'll be able to come in and look to your assets to recoup their their funds and then whatever's left over is what we would we would be able to use um and it, there's all these legal things and we'll take care of that for you and but um what i would suggest is if you are looking for multiple lenders is to get them to is to open up the conversation between them so that my the loan the loan officers can discuss these things um and often um, lenders don't know who we are, community capital and what we do. So being able to talk to them and explain that we're not gonna take priority, we're not gonna, we're, look, we're fine with taking subordinate, like we're really okay with that. So um, if you're doing something that's larger and you need multiple lenders or, or capital sources, which is actually pretty standard, most businesses can't just get started with one lender or one source of, of uh, financing, um, just just help them talk to each other <laughs> and be very open and communicate that you're doing that. Because if I get halfway through my underwriting and find out that you're also applying to a loan from a bank <laughs> and um, I am complete, you haven't shared that with me, then that's gonna be a red flag and that's gonna really put a, um, delay with your process, but also could could um, cause some issues with, with it going forward, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll also say um, VCLF is happy to, to take a subordinate position on, on um, something like collateral. I think a lot of the times when we do end up working with other lenders, it's, it's usually because it is a, a bigger project that, um, the applicant is hard, having a harder time meeting the collateral requirements of other lenders. So a lot of the times it's, it's other lenders coming to us and saying, hey, can you kind of help us fill that gap? Similar to, to community capital. Um, I would also totally second Abby's point. I think it's great when um, applicants are able to bring the different um, lenders together because it just opens up more lines of communication. It seems like it can sometimes even simplify the underwriting process a little bit just because there can be some shared information there. Um, although I will also say, I know there have been times where just because different lenders have different lending policies. So um, there are times where there's also not a match between different um, lenders for a specific project. But um, you know, one example of an uh, instance where I can think of where, where multiple lenders were working together recently that we paired up with was, um, a small business owner was trying to purchase a piece of property for uh, her restaurant and um, was having a hard time coming up with a down payment um, for the, the purchase. So um, we essentially ended up acting, lent her the money for the down payment and then she was able to get approved for um, loans from, from other sources as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think generally speaking it seems like it's larger projects where you do need to bring in multiple groups anyways um, generally speaking if you're looking for a smaller dollar amount chances are that you know even one of the three lenders on here probably would be able to fit your, fill, uh, fulfill your needs individually thank you um so this next question is actually coming from you know the perspective of the work that i do because most of the people that we work with are um um, either sole proprietors or single member LLCs, usually the only person in the business. And so with that in mind, do you have any specific advice that you, that you can share um, that you would give to somebody like that uh, if they are interested in looking for funding? Um, what, what are some things that, that come to mind that you might be able to share with them uh, that they take into consideration? maybe even before applying?
Yeah, um, I'm happy to jump in. This isn't specific to just sole proprietors. Um, we work with a lot of, uh, of businesses in that case as well. I would just say that Will and I would really encourage people to meet with us and like talk in detail about the various programs we've got to. Sounds like other lenders on this panel also have various programs um, just so that we can really help them like go through what's the best fit for them mm -hmm. and really go through the process and the timeline so that we're setting them up for success. But I think that's advice and something that we ask all borrowers, potential borrowers to do because it really helps in the long term. And, and um, you know, we don't want anyone to, to waste their time. You know, the applications are lengthy and pulling together all the information um, is quite the feat. <laughs> right, thanks. Anybody else have anything to add to that? I can just jump in because I know Simeon, you and I have had these conversations before and mm -hmm. um, and it can be facilitated that way or the, the reaching out is definitely vital. I think that even before, a, you can put in your inquiry, but definitely before you put an application in because it's a lot of work um, to do an application just to find out that you don't fit a mission or you're applying for something that we can't even lend for. Um, but I know Simeon has uh, connected with me and we've done Zooms with people who are looking for money and um, I give my spiel and, <laughs> and then uh, let them um, ask questions. And then it's nice to have your business advisor like Simeon with you because um, they can bring up questions that you wouldn't even know to think about. Um, so that's really helpful. Um, and I've done that with SBDC advisors and, you know, a, a, a lot of advisors will do that. But, um, but even if you're not meeting with your advisor, a, a, people are taking in inquiries like myself and Ben and, and everybody, we know what the lending landscape is out there. So if we, I, if I can't help you, I'm going to kind of direct you in a different, in a direction. And it's not a hundred percent. Um, but, you know, if I got a call from a business in Burlington and I know that <laughs> your product would give them a better interest rate, would be quicker and all those things, like I'm, of course, going to reference them on to you. And so um, so talking is is really important. And um, and that's not just like alternative lenders like us. Uh, bank lenders in the state are very open to, to doing that and to help you. And that's where we get a lot of our references is, is because um, a bank can't lend to a business for various reasons, but they don't want to say no. So they, they connect you. So um, that pre talk and really at any stage is, is, is important and will save you time and we'll get you to where you want to be like it, the right lender. Thank you, Abby. Ben? Yeah, I would just um, say, I think it's helpful when, when folks have a little bit of a plan before contacting us. Um, not that you necessarily need a, a full written business plan or, or need to know exactly what your, your short-term or long-term goals are or anything like that. Um, but when you do reach out to us, you know, have some sort of idea of, of maybe how much you're interested in applying for or what you'd be interested in using the loan for, um, as well as, you know, it, it's always useful for our, the folks on our, on our, uh, in our organization who take inquiries, if, you know, if, if they can get a pretty good understanding of, of your business and, and what you are hoping to do um, on that initial inquiry call, it's usually a little bit um, easier to, to figure out whether or not you are ready for a, a business application, um, whether or not, you know, it's worth um, connecting you with, with uh, one of our business advisors or, um, you know, just sending you right to one of our, our loan officers or something along those lines. Um, and, and to be fair, if, if you don't really have a, a very specific plan in place, that's always something that an advisor can work on with you. Um, so I'd also say, you know, always feel comfortable asking questions, asking for help when, when um, you think you need it. And, and then I'd also say it's also probably worth, like I mentioned, kind of looking around a little bit. And because there are, even, even at our organization, I've listed off um, you know, 
four or five different loan programs that we have and how interest rates are ranging from 0% to 8%. Um, so knowing what's available and um, what's going to meet your business's needs and what's going to help your business or, you know, what's going to increase the, the likelihood of success for your business. Um, I think that's also really valuable to, to do as well. Thank you. And um, thanks for the um, uh, unintended plug, Abby. I appreciate it. Uh, so I, I can say that, um, you know, I've been on Zoom calls and arranged introductory meetings with, um, uh, with Ben and Abby over time. And I personally feel that that has been really good and helpful for the client. Um, I, I think that uh, very often, uh, there's some um, um, uh, a little bit of fear that comes with connecting with with a lender. Most most folks have not um, had the experience uh, of connecting with a lender and having this kind of conversation. So it can be helpful to have just a, uh, somebody else with some um, experience with that uh, knows what questions to ask and follow up and. Uh, remind you about what what was said. Uh, so that's something that that we can definitely do, and I do with folks that I work with. And there's never an expectation or an obligation that you need to move forward. Very often, it's an information gathering uh, kind of um, uh, scenario. And perhaps at some point down the road, after we've continued to work on aspects of your business, it'll become clearer if you want to move forward with funding. And then we reapproach the lender and and kind of go from there. Um, some of the some of the things that I, I would like to ask, you know, I've I've noticed over the course of time with the folks that I that I've worked with. So I'll just throw out some general questions here, um, and just see, you know, how what your approach is and thoughts are on these things. So uh, for those that can do uh, con uh, consolidated credit loans, uh, how do, how does that work with with you, especially if they're uh, if somebody's approaching you in their single member LLC or or um, or sole proprietor, which they generally are with us, and so they've got business and personal expenses on there, but they would like to consolidate the loan. Can, can any of you speak to that, how you handle that? I can jump in there. Um, so because we're only a business lender, we cannot consolidate personal um expenses so if someone's coming to me saying that they'd like to consolidate a loan that's the first thing i'll tell them that they'll need to be able to prove that the the funds are our business expenses and um sometimes that's just too overwhelming and they step back but we have had uh this predates me but it, it's a story that i'm sure they'll be telling it see uh community capital for decades um, someone come in with bags of receipts and the loan officer has helped them go through these receipts and classify them as personal or um, uh, business. And, and at that point, we have that proof, we can possibly consolidate that debt. Um, more often, recently, we've been seeing um, online lenders uh, where Cabbage isn't allowed in Vermont anymore, but um, that type of lending, the quick, uh, it's almost um, your like cash register lenders um, that have very aggressive terms and can um, can be, I mean, a, a downfall for a business, and. Um, and we've been able to help businesses get out of that because we're not doing the everyday draw. We're not requiring 90% interest, those type of things. And that's a lot easier to um, classify as, as business debt because it's very clearly business debt. So, um, so that type of consolidation, it's not easy, but it's easier because we can classify it. Um, so it really depends on what kind of the debt is, but it, we definitely cannot do personal debt. Um, it, you ha and you have to be able to prove, prove that. Okay, so in that example, um, you could consolidate the business portion. Is that what I'm understanding? But yeah, not if it's a credit, right. If it's like a credit card that you 
are co-mingled, co mm -hmm. which I highly suggest you work on not doing that. Right. Um, <laughs> so I know. Um, then yes, we could we could do that. Um, but also we need to make sure that that it won't happen, continue to happen. So we might require you to, um, and we have we've required uh, businesses to provide monthly statements so that we know that that you're not getting back into that or um uh close close the credit card i mean there there might be expectations of you for debt consolidation because that's really the riskiest type of lending that we can do because it's already clear that you've gotten into a situation with debt that you are unable to manage so um so there'll be often there are some additional requirements of your loan that isn't something that we would do with other other borrowers but um but it's to it's really to, to help you move forward and not to to repeat those those issues gotcha thanks anybody else care to weigh in on that yeah i'll kind of just echo everything abby said um we we can help folks restructure their debt or, or consolidate their debt uh, but it, it does have to be business debt um there are two people who I can think of right now who I've gone through like two or three years each of credit card statements, literally looking at every single transaction and trying to figure out what is what. Um, and so it, it can be limited. Um, and to Abby's point, it's, it's easier to go through that process when you do have separate personal and business bank accounts and um, credit cards and um, all that stuff. Um, but it is something that we'd be willing to work with people on, particularly folks who, who I don't know if we can technically call, you know, square predatory lender, but folks who tend to get into, who take on loans with, with um, unreasonably high interest rates. Mm -hmm. um, I will also say, I, I know our loan team is, can at times be concerned when, when working on loans like that, just because as Abby mentioned, there is kind of a, a at that point, a track record of, of folks um, using credit in a unsustainable way. Although obviously that there, there are things like interest rates and late fees and even prepayment fees that obviously contributes to that too. Um, so our loan team can be a little bit more weary with that, but we are again, willing to work with you on it. Um, the, the one kind of tidbit I will add though, is, um, a lot of the times when folks do reach out to us because they are having issues repaying their, their business debt, um, there is an immense understandably, an immense sense of urgency where they are basically saying, Hey, we need this loan in two weeks, or we're going to have to shut things down. And unfortunately at the end of the day, our loan team still needs to go through their regular analysis and underwriting. Process. So, um, you know, ideally, if, if, if you can get ahead of these issues, you know, the earlier you can get ahead of them, the, the better it's obviously going to be for you, but also um, the more realistic of a chance there is for, for us to be able to help out um, in, in whatever scenario you're in. Thank you. Um, Will, Johanna, anything to mention on that front? Not it's okay. No, okay. Um, so uh, very often uh, I find that the, the folks that I work with, because it's just them in the business, they need to acquire things that will very likely be for both business and personal use. Obvious examples of that could be a, a vehicle or um, maybe a computer or other technology. So how do you address that? with them? For us, um, I think our, our general, I don't think it's an actual policy, but our general rule is so long as whatever is being financed through us is going to at least 51% of the time be used for the business, we can kind of say it's a, a business asset. Um, I don't know what sort of verification process our loan team goes through or anything along those lines to, to prove it. But I, I do know that, um, again, and, and I think this is largely because of the licenses we have and, and the regulations that we abide by and stuff like that, be, 
because we are exclusively a commercial lender, we just need to make sure whatever it is that we're helping finance is going to be at least majority used, if not exclusively used for the business. Great, thank you. Yeah, I would just kind of echo what Ben just said. Um, we do have one business that's, uh, we're about to underwrite who is applying for a vehicle, but it's very clear that this will be a work vehicle right now. They're renting a U-Haul every day, which obviously is not the best use of funds. So we're trying to help them invest in their own vehicle to save them some costs. Um, and then, you know, we did have one, you know, seasonal business that wanted a vehicle, but it turned out to be a very high-end vehicle that um, they decided on their own that this probably wasn't the the best fit, kind of like a luxury vehicle that they would use occasionally for business. It was, it was pretty clear that this was more of a personal vehicle than a, a business vehicle. Thank you. Um, so the on the vehicle part, if it's very clear, like we bought a refrigerator van for a florist, like she's she might use it to drive down to the grocery store, but probably not. <laughs> um, then we're really, there isn't much requirements that we're gonna ask of you, but we have had um, it, it, cleaning services that have, have looked to buy a vehicle um, that very easily could be a personal vehicle. So um, the federal standard is 80% of the time the vehicle needs to be used as a business to to be able to write it off in your taxes. So that's kind of what we follow. And um, we've actually required um, people to provide uh, logs to, to prove that. Um, and that's both for, for the business's benefit because then it will be a lot easier at the end of the year to write those, those things off. But then also um, if we ever get audited and you know because we work with the SBA, uh, we really have to prove that, that what we're lending for is for a business. So, um, so that's on the vehicle side. The other things like computers, like I understand that your computer is going to be a personal computer also. So that's not something that we're going to really concern ourselves too much with, as long as it's very clear that the business needs it. If you're buying, I don't know, ten, twenty thousand dollar computer system, then yes, we'll need a little bit more security that that is really what your business needs and isn't. I, I honestly don't know gaming something or whether you know <laughs> but um so it's very it's 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 very dependent on what the business is um and it's something we'll discuss and go over and if you're not comfortable with it then that's fine you don't you don't need to we we can move along you know but um but if you're you're open to meeting those requirements then that's great thank you um and I'm curious, obviously you get a lot of loan requests from businesses in different industries. Have you noticed where there's some industries, I don't know, restaurants come to mind where um, you have, you look for specific things or you have concerns about, or you want to see specific things addressed? Um, I know that's, that may be a question a bit out of the blue, but uh, I, I'm, it doesn't have to be a restaurant. It's just one example that I've used. Um, Food-based business um, could be a restaurant, maybe not. But so, just any any industries that kinds of businesses that come to mind where you're where you're like, you know, generally speaking, we need we would like to see this kind of information from this kind of if you're op going to be operating this kind of business. Yeah, we'll certainly have um, different things we'll keep an eye on. I mean, we don't have any, you know, for a restaurant, we don't require that the cost of goods sold are 35% of revenue or less or something like that, um, which is kind of considered an industry standard. Um, and we might keep it in mind when our loan team is doing their analysis. But if you're hitting 40 or 42 or whatever the number ends up being, it's not like we're going to say no. Um, there are other things that are going to be taken into consideration. Um, I think for us, um, you know, there, when we get a little bit more caught up on things, um, uh, example I'll provide is, is, you know, if a childcare providers wants to start offering an after school program, making sure that they have the necessary licenses, they're following the, the regulations in place, um, they have the 
infrastructure to be able to handle the kids and everything like that. So um, there are times where we will, you know, kind of follow up or double check or, or make sure that, um, you know, no business is going to be breaking any laws or, or um, you know, in, in the instance of a child care provider, they're going to be offering kind of sub standard or even illegal services. Um, but we, we generally don't have, um, you know, requirements in terms of, of numbers that you need to be hitting, um, uh, regardless of whether or not it's revenue or, or certain types of expenses. Or anything along those lines. Thank you, Ben. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that. It's the legal aspect of your business really is what um, you need to have kind of thought of, not necessarily in place, but just to know what you're going to need to do. Um, and then insurance, that's another really important thing. Uh, again, understand you won't have, if you're a startup, that's not something you're going to have actually in place yet, but they have binders and such that, that you can have ahead of time. Um, so, so that type of thing. And then just really understanding and it's very particular to the business, um, but I can, well, on the licensing side, I can bring up a food truck that came to us and he, he was already kind of operating, but really sh legally shouldn't have been operating. And um, I provided all the information about what he's going to do, need to do to get licensing. And he pretty much refused um, because he was already operating. So I imagine if you're working with an advisor, that is not the way you're going to come to a lender, <laughs> but, um, but make sure that, and, and what you don't know, you don't know. So that's why working with, with an advisor is really handy because I'm currently working with a, a bar restaurant that's opening up and he's never, he has no experience in it. It's, it's what I call COVID dream, <laughs> which I've had a lot of businesses come that are that way. And, um, and he, I mean, does didn't even know about wastewater permits. Um, but as soon as I brought it up, he started researching and figuring out what he needed to do. So, so you might not know everything, but be able to listen and um, and then and put into to play those those items. Um, and then understanding like the the financial requirements of operating a business that's a really big thing that when i'm looking through a business plan or um, talking to a client a potential um that if they and i if you are comfortable keeping your books in an excel document that's great but you just need to be able to do that i don't we're not requiring you to hire a bookkeeper or even use quickbooks but understand that that's going to be a vital part of your business um, that is just as important as understanding the, the licensing and the, the permitting and such so um, those those are really the big pieces that um, cover all all businesses that, that I work with yeah I definitely agree with what Ben and Abby said we work with a lot of food-based businesses um, for our loan programs, when we're evaluating, we really like to see new types of food that Burlington may not have. So we funded um, an East African business, a Panamanian food business, which we get more excited about than like another burger joint downtown, just because we have a lot of them already. So from like our evaluation, we like to see new food businesses. We do have some requirements with our city programs, whether it be the cart program or food truck opportunities when it comes to insurance and having a health license through the Department of Health. So, you know, those are just things that we require for a lot of city of Burlington programs. And then when our underwriters, you know, are underwriting these loans, one of them started a couple restaurants in Burlington. So he could, you know, he looks for certain um percentages that are going towards you know the cost of goods sold things like that um and he'll work with applicants to kind of if he sees a red flag like this number looks off or you know your projections i i think you're going to be paying a lot more than you expect in this category he'll he'll kind of provide some technical assistance just given his experience 
started a number of restaurants in town. Great, thank you. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Um, I'm curious, uh, you kind of alluded to it, Abby. Um, if somebody approaches you for funding to start a business and they don't have any experience in it, um, is that a red flag? And to what do, what advice would you give them? And to what degree would you feel comfortable moving forward with funding if they didn't have um, experience in the business? Um, I don't, it, it really depends on the business for sure. Um, one thing that I consider a lot with startups and well over 50% of our portfolio is startups. So um, we, that's really primarily who we work with um, is coachability. So uh, understanding both what you've already gone out and researched and then how open you are to suggestion and then support. Uh, and that's um, that because with a startup, the financials are important, but there's no way to confirm them. <laughs> so, so the story and your, the um, dedication that the business owner has already um, put into developing it uh, is, is really important. I'll go back to this bar um, uh, example. He's never even bartended before. So um, I that was definitely a concern. I was def completely gonna move forward, but he independently, through advice he took from a business advisor, picked up like two shifts a week at a bar in the evening. And it's like blown his mind, <laughs> he had no idea. So, um, so it's not something that I would not move forward with, but if you have no experience, um, and that's not necessarily like you've owned a business and you're putting together a business that is doing something different that you've never done before. I'm saying like no experience at all. You've, you've, um, you've never even made something in your kitchen that you're going to start selling like that. That isn't, isn't a no-go for me, but it also doesn't necessarily support um your uh ability to be successful or at least even be able to pay back your loan unless it's clear that you put in that research and, and that can come through in a business plan in a really good cash flows in the conversations that you're having I mean from inquiry stage on <laughs> that I I'm considering that the whole way through with a loan. Um, so yeah, it really depends on on the business that that you're doing. Uh, it's very particular, but um, but definitely it's not. Everyone has to start somewhere. So um, I mean, that's again a reason why all of us lenders exist is because you go to a bank. That's not. I can't say they won't they won't support you, but often they won't. <laughs> so. Thank you. Yeah, I'll add. It, it's not a red flag for us necessarily. To Abby's point, it, it does sometimes help with the narrative or the story around the business owner themselves. Um, and and uh, from an advisory perspective, I think if anything, I would take it more into consideration just because, you, like Abby said, you don't know what you don't know. And if, if even if you, um, you know, we'll, we'll just keep running with the restaurant stuff. Even if you're a, a great chef and you've worked in the kitchen before and you have a lot of the technical expertise and experience that you would need to open up and manage your own business, um, a lot of the times opening and running a business doesn't actually involve a lot of the stuff that you've worked on your entire life. Um, there's far more administrative and operational stuff that you end up having to deal with than a lot of the times you expect, or um, also a lot of the times, you know, more than you want to. Um, so from my perspective as an advisor, I'll definitely take that into consideration, and uh, particularly if I'm working with somebody, I'm filling out something like financial projections, realizing they might not be aware of all the different expenses they're gonna have to end up paying for and how costly can they can all end up being, um, or, or kind of tidbits like that. So it, it, it 
might end up coming into play with uh, you know the application process, um, but we are more than happy to work with you know fresh brand new startups. Um, it's just sometimes not you know sometimes newer business owners need just a little bit more support um, when starting things off. Thanks, Ben. Will Johanna, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? No, good, okay. Um, yeah, I'll just kind of mention um, like Ben from an advisory point of view, I'll, I'll strongly encourage people to learn about the business before going into debt because um, so they're very, they're, they're more clear on what it is they're, they're planning, they're, they're going to do. So that could take the role of getting a job right, or, or, or job shadowing or interviewing or certainly researching. So um, those are some basic things and conversations we might talk about if somebody finds themselves in that, in that position because we want somebody to go into a position where they're more likely to succeed. And um, if you're going to move in a direction because you love doing something um, and, and you're willing to go into debt for it, then it just stands to reason that you should learn more aspects of, of the business because you won't just be doing the things you love to do in it. So um, those are all the questions I have. Um, I know we've kind of come right up to the end of the, of the workshop today, but does anybody else have any questions, comments before we wrap up? Okay, well, I would like to sincerely thank um, Will and uh, Johanna and Abby and Ben for uh, sharing their information and their experiences and their knowledge with us today. And I, I do hope that this helps to break down any barriers somebody might have uh, when it comes to approaching a lender and by all means, um, uh, feel free to connect with myself if you're looking for some um, no-cost business counseling, as well as you know the the other organizations that were mentioned in the slides. Uh, to that end, um, Sophia is going to be emailing everybody the presentations from today, the, which will include the contacts for everybody that was on on the um, all the presenters today, and. Uh, by all means, we encourage you to check out the, our other upcoming classes, and uh, you can you can check those out on cvoeo.org and click on the learning link and be able to just scroll down to micro business and check out our upcoming classes as well as our pre-recorded classes. And um, I believe Sophia will include that in the link as well. And um, again, I would be remiss if I did not. Uh, thank Sophia for all her work. Uh, she is a, an incredible asset to us and just kind of make, makes these classes happen. So I couldn't do it alone. So thank you, Sophia, so much for all the help and support. I really do appreciate it. Well, thank you, Simeon. I really appreciate all the help that you provide in organizing these great panels. Great. Um, and as Simeon mentioned, I'll send a follow-up email likely tomorrow morning when this video is done uploading and processing. Um, and thank you again to everyone who... Uh, joined us today and thank you to our presenters yes thank you and if the presenters don't mind just hanging on for one minute um